Glenn Farkless 15 versus McAllen 15 double cask. Which space side sherry bomb should you be after? Stay tuned for the whiskey whistle. What it is, my whiskey people, Mark Kaufman here for Whiskey Whistle on YouTube, sharing a little whiskey awesomeness from Winnipeg, the center of North America, bringing you part four, the fourth part of the 15-year-old Scotch Single Malt Series here on Whiskey Whistle, this time with Glenn Farkless, 15-year-old, and McAllen, 15-year-old. Both of them exclusively sherry cask matured, both of them 15 years old, and both of them space side. So this is quite a matchup here. And I know where my heart's going, but I'm gonna let my mouth, my nose and my mouth, tell me which of these two is really the best 15 year old sherry bomb from space side. All right, so let's get these poured. We'll start with the Glen Farkless 15. Both of these are 2022 purchases. For people who are interested, this is lot number 02. 0221. Does that mean it was it was bottled last year? Any any which way that's the lot. Let's get that poured. Okay. No short pours here. Okay, there we go. And we'll pour the McAllen 15. Now this is a mix of American and European oak. Both of them, both kinds of oak, sherry seasoned. I think that Glen Farkless actually uses some older, older barrels. Uh, probably not any actual sherry barrels because those are hard to come by. And those are almost always American oak, by the way. But you can see quite a difference in color there. Now, uh, let's have a look at the color first of all. So with the Glen Farkless, we've got something that is marmalady, um, just about a coppery hue. And then over with McAllen, uh, we're beyond copper. And by the way, supposedly this is natural in color. It doesn't actually say so on the label. So you have to read into their website. It'd be nice to see that on the label, wouldn't it? And uh, there's a bit of a, uh, a ABV discrepancy. 46% for Glen Farkless versus 43% McAllen. There's also a huge, absolutely huge price difference here. A factor of two. Almost exactly a factor of two. $110 in Alberta for Glen Farkless 15. $225 in Alberta and in Manitoba for uh, the McAllen 15. Although here we add a little bit more tax. So it gets up to $252 for this bottle of 15 year old Scotch single malt whiskey. Should it even be here? I hesitated. I thought to myself, you know what? No, McAllen does not deserve a spot in this series because this is what they're offering and it is underpowered and they're overcharging for it. It may be natural color, but it certainly, it certainly is chill filtered. That's the way things lie. We'll have a look at the legs. Before we do that, make sure you subscribe to Whiskey Whistle. Okay, hit that, uh, that logo to subscribe. Hit the bell, ding ding, so you're notified of future Whiskey Whistles. And if you're watching a lot of Whiskey Whistle and you're enjoying this series, why not check, out, check me out on uh, Patreon or buymeacoffee.com and join the Whiskey Whistle crew patreon.com forward slash whiskey whistle or buymeacoffee.com forward slash whiskey whistle joining and supporting the channel will get your name in the credits at the end of each video you'll also get advanced viewing up to about 24 hours of each video that i put out and advanced advanced notification of live streams i'll do some actual um patron streams very soon I think in the fall, at least one, at least one this fall. We'll see how that goes. And last but not least, with enough support, you'll get yourself your Whiskey Whistle Glen Cairn glass. Um, and uh, hopefully you'll show that off 
and tell all your friends. <laughs> uh, eventually, t-shirts coming as well. And I'll do the, the, the 180 one more time. Ooh. All right. So double-sided makes it a little bit fun. And uh, everybody says, all my kids say, Daddy, why does it say, why does it say tic-tac-toe whiskey whistle? <laughs> Beautiful. All right, the legs. Yeah, we almost forgot. We, meaning I. Okay. So what do we see for legs here? McAllen is starting first. Pretty quick for McAllen. Much slower for Glenn Farkless. And I hope you can see that. Oh, yeah, some really thick drips coming on in the back of the Glen Farkless. And McAllen, just now also, the secondary uh, secondary tiers, the secondary legs, um, getting pretty drippy there. So probably we'll have a little bit more chewiness with Glen Farkless. Um, however, the McAllen doesn't look so bad. So we'll get into this now. And what we'll do here is we'll start with Glen Farkless. We'll go through the nose, the palate, and the finish. And then add water and check those out again. And then give it a whiskey whistle, whiskey score. And then we'll move into the McAllen and go through the nose, the palate, the finish, neat and with water. Give it a whiskey whistle, whiskey score. And then do a side-by-side -side comparison at the very end before we close things out. So do stay tuned for that. And the series so far, what did we have so far? We had... Glen Cadham 15 versus Glen Morangy 15, Highland Park 15 versus Bullmore 15, and then Glen Scotia 15 versus Ben Romick 15, and in the reverse order, Ben Romick 15 versus Glen Scotia 15. So these are kind of like the really attractive bottles for, let's say, enthusiasts. And you might be wondering to yourself, okay, well, double the price. I mean, what should I be doing here? I mean, right off the bat, double the price. I'm going to say get yourself two bottles of Glen Farkless. Um, it's a, a family-owned distillery. It's natural in color. It may be chill filtered. It doesn't say so on the label. Probably not. Um, there's a lot of good things here. And uh, they're very, very particular with their wood. Both of them are really, really um, wood... What can I say? Wood mongers? <laughs> so, anyway... But uh, we'll get started here with uh, Glen Farkless 15. Check out the nose together. Beautiful, sweet, subtle sherry. We've got fresh and dried red fruit. We have the classic flintiness that comes through with Glen Farkless 15 because they actually direct fire their stills. And it comes off as just like a little kiss of peat there. There might be a tiny bit of peat in here. It reminds me of things like Yoichi in, uh, in, uh, in Japan, which also is direct fired. A little bit like millstone as well out of the Netherlands. There's a earthiness, a grassiness, uh, that subtle kiss of smoke and um, flintiness, gunpowderiness, and that mix of fresh and dried red fruits, some underripe strawberry, and choke cherries. Mm, and the more you smell it, the more intense that red fruit becomes. A little bit of um, freshly brewed Korean green tea. Posong, uh, Posong Nokta uh, from Jiri Mountain. It's coming off a little bit. Uh, like, I can tell it's going to be astringent. There's even something like Korean five-flavor berry, the omita, omita coming through here. Okay. Well, I'm salivating. Let's get on to the palate, shall we? Cheers, everybody.
Hmm. Very nicely syrupy. And that's a refreshing change for Glenfarclas, whose palettes are generally a little bit uh, a little bit light. Typically we have 40% for the 12, 43% for the rest of the range, with the exception of the 15. So good choice, I think. It really mirrors the, the, the nose, the red fruit, the grassiness, that kiss of smoke, the, um, the flintiness. It's quite complex. The finish is a solid medium, maybe even getting onto long. And here comes the fruit flies looking for their sherry bombs. Missed it. You. We know who that is, don't we? <laughs> Has he left? <laughs> Something also very... To, to put a word to this, it's kind of like um, Eastern European brandy. Uh, the, what is it called again? Palinka. Barrel-aged palinka. Could very well be all European oak here. It's got some good spice. Nutmeg, some sweet ginger. And we'll add some water here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Was that ten? There. Might have been eleven. Give that a quick, intense, shaky, shaky. And it brings more of this warm mm, fruit, fruit brandy coming through here. Or pumice brandy. Like like grappa, but uh, you know, so they have grappa in in Italy, and you can get um, uh, azu. What is it called? Um, it's very similar, azu palinka, uh, which is also made from uh, from the pumice. And pumice, if you're not if you're not aware. It's what's left out, left over after you take the must away. You take the must, the juice, and you make wine. Then you have some wet uh, stems and skins that still contain a lot of sugars. And uh, then you, you will ferment, continue to ferment that, um, and, uh, and then distill what you get from that to make grappa and this kind of uh, azu palinka. Oh, yeah. Hungarian oak? Wow, very complex in its 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 use of oak here. Hmm. With water, things just get a little bit sweetened up slightly. Tones down the astringency somewhat. Let's check out the nose with water for Glen Farkless one more time. It certainly has mellowed out. I'm getting a little bit of mm, unlit cigar tobacco on the nose. We still have a nice grassy note alongside those red fruits. And that little touch of that flintiness, that touch of smoke coming through as well. Some nice cocoa. A little bit of something kind of like some chili pepper, but a sweet kind. And it's not hot, but it's just a little bit spicy alongside that uh, that sweet cocoa and red fruity type of flavors. Some white pepper. Again, sort of Talisker-esque here. Very complex. For a sherry bomb, 
This is about as complex as it gets. You're not looking at just deep, dark, red fruits, dried fruits, chocolate. You're getting a lot more here. A hint of apricot. And the finish is sweet cocoa red fruit that flintiness gunpowdery like flavor that little kiss of smoke and i really like this Ooh, very nice final sip here the key is here it's complex okay on to the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glenn Farkless 15. What is that going to be, folks? It's going to be 90 out of 100. You heard it. 90 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for Glenn Farkless 15. I highly recommend this bottle for your, your, your whiskey shelf, your whiskey room, your speakeasy at home. Let's give it a quick whiskey hug here. Mm, a malt hug and a nice little kiss on, I guess... On the cheek. Mwah. There we go. Um, it's quite nice. It's very complex. I think my only hesitancy with giving this a higher score here is that, in my opinion, these barrels that they're using for this whiskey are meant to be aged 21 to 25 years. And while it is much more sherry focused than um, Glen Farkless 105, which of course it's sherry, but it's got a lot of apricot, um, orange, green fruits in there. Um, that's just how I feel. So I think we're getting going in the right direction here, but you know, whether it's some kind of a um, and ex couple extra first fill sherry casks because I know they've got them. I had that 2004. There's a review. I've got a review of the 2004 cask strength for the German market. It was poof, amazing. It's flawless, but I think this would destroy everything at age 25 years which is why i give it whiskey of the year for the 25 year old a couple years ago all right excellent i need to refresh my palate to wake it up again to neutralize it so a little bit of coffee here this is home brew and then we'll have some water Maybe a little whiff of some coffee beans. Okay. Well, you know what? I am ready. <laughs> okay, let's get into McAllen 15-year-old double cask, 43% ABV. $252 here in Manitoba. Why is it here? things this had i mean if this isn't even 90 points it better be 90 points if it's not 90 points um there's gonna be hell to pay okay all right so the nose for mccallan 15 well it's got a classic mccallan nose and it's got the original mccallan nose that i look for when I'm looking for McAllen. It's got a nose similar to not the current 12 year old with the black bottle, black box, but the previous with the, uh, what color was it? With the ready brown colored box. Very similar nose. <laughs> Mm. 
We have gummy worms. We have Bon Maman strawberry jam. A little bit of um, marmalade, orange Seville marmalade in there. Seville orange marmalade. Maybe Mackay's. And there's some nice, interesting spices. There's some sweet ginger. And a coating of thick, um, like vanilla fondant. Fond fondant? 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 And that's that melding here of American oak as well as European oak. I'm not getting much nutmeg on the nose. It's in there somewhere. And nutmeg to me is one of the first things that I really smell in European oak. Cedar as well. I'm not getting very much cedar. So these are fairly well seasoned casks. I think for the 12 year old, maybe they don't season those barrels as long as for the 15 or the 18 or rare cask, etc. I wonder. Excuse me. <clears throat> and there's a little bit of nuttiness. And so far, we're going in the right direction here for nose. How much better would that be at 46? It would be a lot better. And a little bit of chocolate ganache coming out here. So again, all signs point towards something enjoyable. And I know that for a lot of people, this is the part of the video that they really wanted to see. And that's why I put it at the end. That's right. There's a tiny little bit of sulfur. It is fairly minimal backseat type of sulfur. It's not detrimental. It may even be enhancing for some palates. I think that's it for the nose neat. Let's get into the palette then. Cheers, folks. The initial flavor was intensely Macallan great sherry. But then, bam. It was like putting my tongue on the wood inside of a Finnish sauna. Like, like this. Mm. <laughs> a little too aggressive with the wood. That sherry needs to season those casks for longer. It does. Or there needs to be more sherry put in the barrels. Um, so that it can, you know, well, essentially remove some of the overt tannins. Um, some of that heavy, heavy spice. Back when I reviewed the 12 year old, I had a very similar experience and I really didn't like that new 12 year old. This is better. It is a nice mix of two different casks. But again, something just a little bit too overtly oaky here. When your tongue, when your palate acclimatizes to that level of oakiness, things kind of steer back on the path again, the path to Macallan enlightenment. It's good. And... I think that 
where you find that American oak working here is you're getting some kind of citrusy, um, sweeter notes here. So it's a lot sweeter than the typical Macallan profile. But it's far too astringent. It does have a long finish. It's got a longer finish than Glenfarclas here. But I can't say it's actually that enjoyable a finish. I'd like the fruit flavor to carry and carry and carry. Not necessarily the, um, the oak zinginess, effervescence, mm, intense cinnamon, like actually sticking your tongue on um, some cinnamon in your hand. Eventually it begins to burn. Okay, well, let's add some water here. Whoa. Ten drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And again, lately I've been using these source spring water from Scotland. It's a little bit gimmicky. It's kind of fun. These are low to medium mineral salts, uh, dissolved mineral salts type of spring water. Um, oftentimes I do use something more local. This is um, spring water from... Uh, British Columbia, which is very, very low uh, dissolved salts of 97 ppm. The higher the ppm of dissolved salts, dissolved minerals, the bigger the change to the whiskey th that you'll see. 500 ppm will change the flavor of your whiskey. Okay. Okay. So let's shake that up a little bit. And when I do that, I'm getting those fresh gummy worms coming through. The um, Haribo. And that's really, really enjoyable. The nose with water is lovely. Lovely in terms of lovely as a Macallan Sherry Bomb. And it's nice, it's adding a little bit of complexity with the marmalade coming through. And again, a little coating of, of vanilla. So that really hasn't changed here. And I'm hoping that the water is going to have toned down the oak. So let's see if that's the case here. Cheers again. In this case, Yes, it has toned down the oak. It's not gone. It's still there. And I feel like we have a good mix, maybe 50% European, 50% American oak. Could be 60, 40, 70, 30 at the very, very lowest. 70 being American oak, 30 being European oak. The finish is still a little bit too woodsy. Woodsy, woody, that's better. Some currants. Those little tiny ones, they're super sweet. Some kind of a Dutch spice cake. Lotus biscuits with that extra spice in there. With water, my mouth right now is very, very dry and astringent. It's definitely not the the spirit. I mean, McAllen makes pretty darn good spirit for sure. But it's a, it, I think it's the oak here.
if I didn't know this was McAllen, and again, I might be able to pick it out blind because of how often I've had McAllen. But if I take that away, and I've got some sherried cask whiskey, 43% ABV, and if somebody asked me, Mark, how is this? I'd say, oh, it's good. It's pretty good. <coughs> I'd say it's not fantastic, but it's good. It could be 12 to 15 years old. It might only be 12. Because of the astringency, I might say that it was 46% ABV. If I didn't know that it was 43 because of that heavy astringency and the strong, zingy, oaky flavor. And if somebody asked me, what would you pay for this? I'd say I'd pay $100 for it maximum, $120. If it's a special edition and I like that brand, well, then I might pay a little bit more. And then if they told me that this was $250, I would laugh. I would laugh very, very hard. And I would probably use some expletives unbecoming a whiskey whistle. Final sip here. The integration of casks, again, is, it's good. The casks are very good quality. They're very good quality. But they haven't been appropriately conditioned for McAllen. And the bar was set so high. They've got a lot of work to do. They're riding on their name. And people are obviously buying this. And they're buying the 18 for five and six hundred dollars Canadian. They're buying the rare cask for 450. I like the rare cask. I think it's a great whiskey. That might be my favorite McAllen that's relatively attainable. I'll never buy it again because it's $450, but um, it's a nice whiskey. It's a nice sherry bomb. This leaves my mouth very dry. I would need a lot of water to drink alongside this in order to enjoy it. Maybe I should say in order to get through it. Hmm. And funnily, small sips. The smaller the sip here, the less interesting it is. So I don't think it's made for me. I don't think it's made for you. It's made for, you know, your mid-tenure lawyer looking to pour a little glass of something for, uh, for uh, a newcomer or for a client. They can write off that bottle. They'll pour it in a tumbler, right? And uh, probably have it with ice. <sighs> no kiss for this. Not even a hug. I'm really disappointed here. Is it better than the 12 year old? Yes. I think I gave that, I don't know, what was it 83, 84? And I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go back and check. This is how I feel right now. So the whiskey was a whiskey score for McAllen 15 double cask. What is that gonna be folks? It's gonna be 82 out of 100. You heard it, 82 out of 100 is the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score for McAllen, 15-year-old double cask. Thoroughly disappointing. 
The nose is good. It's got a better nose than the than the Glen Farkless. I'll give it that. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the McAllen 15. Have you bought any additional bottles or was it a one and done for you? Let's check these out side by side. Super complex. Hungarian wood for sure. Ah, yeah, it's a dead ringer. It's that kind of oak. The sessile oak. Big variety of fruit. That kiss of, of uh, something smoky, something flinty. And the Macallan over here. Side by side, I'm getting more spice. Typical Macallan sherry. But the potency of the nose is stronger for Glenfarclas. And I think when I say I like this better, what I'm saying is that it is closer to the standard Macallan. Very different. And the palettes here, Glenfarclas. Interesting. A lot of changes. Very complex. It tells a story. Different types of oak. And that um, direct fired spirit still carrying through. I'm sure Glen Farkless new make is super interesting. Flavorful, cocoa infused, fruity finish. It's not overly dry. It's the right mix of sweetness and dryness. And then over here with Macallan. Dry as a bone. So dry, overly dry, overly oaky, pencil shavings. Dried wood. Licking cheap Chinese chopsticks sharp intensely intensely sharp finish maybe 82 was too generous for McAllen 15 well I hope you enjoyed that Please let me know your thoughts on either or both of these. Which are you more likely to buy or which are you more likely to rebuy? I see myself buying more of the 15 year old and the price at $110. It's phenomenal. I need to give this another kiss. Oh, oh yes. Oh, and a nice hug. Mwah. Oh, it's so great. I mean, so far, it's the most reasonable 15-year-old, and it held its own. Here we have it's the most expensive, and it doesn't even belong in the same company as the other seven bottles that I've had on. Next up, I'm going to put all eight bottles, and I'll try to do that blind, semi-blind. I mean, I'll know what bottles they are, and... I might know some of the colors of them. I don't have enough dark glasses, dark Glencairns. But anyway, um, I'll uh, I'll put the numbers on the bottom of the of the the glass, and I'll cover it so it's kind of like a little letter, and then I'll peel it off at the end, and we'll see how they rank in live real time. Not live. It's not going to be live in real time without knowing which is which, and we'll see if that is roughly how I scored them throughout this series. So stay tuned for that. I haven't recorded it yet, obviously, so that'll be coming in a couple of weeks' time. Um, I do have another 15-year-old from Talisker. That'll be up next. 
but I don't have anything that really pairs with Talisker. So um, I think that'll be outside the realm of this series. It's also a special edition, so it doesn't really belong here, I don't think. But uh, anyway, that, that'll be up next to Talisker. I've got a couple of bourbon reviews coming soon as well. So stay tuned for all of that. Again, my name is Mark Kaufman. You're watching Whiskey Whistle. Check me out on Patreon and, and uh, buymeacoffee.com. And we'll see you for the next one. Bye now. <music>